Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Tuesday. Glad you're here. Awesome show. Uh, Steve Kim, Coach JB, we're going to talk some football, uh, some NFL football. We're going to talk a little college football. Uh, we're going to have a fantastic show. I'll start with a fire starter about Nick Chubb. Uh, and then we'll transition into, I'm not done with Colorado State. I'm not done with Henry Blackburn and Deion Sanders and all of that. We'll do that with Steve Kim and Coach JB. Before I do anything, I want to tell you guys about how you can bank on yourself. Have you been told to max out your 401k? The Wall Street Casino loves to roll the dice with your hard-earned life savings. But the only thing Wall Street guarantees is that they will always get paid whether you win or lose. Thankfully, there's a better way to grow your nest egg. Bank on yourself is a guaranteed and predictable way to grow your hard-earned money. This retirement plan alternative gives you 100% control of your money plus tax-free income in retirement. Bank on Yourself provides guaranteed predictable growth in retirement income with no luck, skill, or guesswork required. You'll know what your tax rate will be in retirement, zero, under current tax law, which protects you from the coming tax tsunami. You're also in control. Unlike 401ks or IRAs, with Bank on Yourself, you get access to your money for any purpose at any time with no questions asked and no government penalties or restrictions on how much income you can take or when you can take it. Now, get a free report with all the details on how Bank on Yourself's strategy adds guarantees, predictability, tax savings, and control to your financial plan. Just go to bankonyourself.com slash fearless. That's bankonyourself.com slash fearless. What could be more fearless than banking on yourself? Guys, support the sponsors that support us and bank on yourself. All right, let's get to this fire starter. Uh, fixing the NFL's running back problem should be a top priority for Lloyd Howe, the new leader of the NFL Players Association. I doubt he'll fix it though. NFL running backs are like black on black crime victims. No one really cares. The problem is paid public lip service but there are no meaningful efforts to solve the diminishing value of players and the position that carried professional football for 70 years. I bring this up because of the gruesome knee injury Nick Chubb suffered Monday night. The Cleveland running back appeared to tear every ligament on a routine running play against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The contortion of Chubb's knee was so gross that ESPN appropriately chose not to show a replay of the injury. At age 27 and six years into his career, Nick Chubb is likely done as a high-profile, high-earning running back. What little future contract leverage Chubb had disappeared Monday night. NFL running backs are the most disposable players in a league known for its short career spans. Over the past decade, as the salaries of every other NFL position group has skyrocketed, the contract market for running backs has dried up. Every offseason is filled with contract drama for some high-profile running back. Five years ago, Pittsburgh running back Le'Veon Bell set out the entire season forcing a trade to the Jets. He didn't really improve his contract leverage. He set out, recorded a rap song that didn't generate much revenue, and basically made an annoyance of himself. This past offseason, Colts running back Jonathan Taylor starred in the nastiest contract dispute. He publicly feuded with owner Jim Irsay. Taylor entered training camp complaining of back problems. He's going to miss the first four games of the season. This week, the NFL filed a grievance against the NFLPA claiming that the Players Union has advised running backs to fake injuries to improve their contract leverage. Conventional wisdom driving teams is that a team can draft a new rookie to play running back rather than give a veteran player a lucrative long-term contract. Every other position in the NFL dreams of landing a record-setting second or third contract. Running backs have their most value on draft night. The problem is rookie contracts are tightly controlled by a wage scale. The NFLPA, under the boneheaded direction of former executive director D. Marie Smith, push for the rookie wage scale. But the problems for NFL running backs runs deeper than the wage limitations. In a league 
determined to institute safety protections for every player, running back is the least protected position in football. You can still hit an NFL running back in virtually any fashion imaginable. The league has implemented rules on where and when you can hit quarterbacks, receivers, long snappers, kickers, special teams players, and even defensive players. You can pretty much have your way with running backs. Defenders can lower their helmets and knock a running back into the middle of next week. No one cares. You have to ask permission to hit a quarterback. The most violent position on the football field is running back. The guys taking pay cuts are taking all the big hits. Should we be surprised that Nick Chubb, J.K. Dobbins are done for the season? Saquon Barkley will miss several weeks. Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones, and David Montgomery are banged up. Just think about the history of the NFL. Jim Thorpe, Bronco Nagurski, Steve Van Buren, Jim Brown, O.J. Simpson, Gail Sayers, and Walter Payton built professional football's popularity. They were the game's biggest stars. In the 1970s, Simpson and Payton were the highest paid players by far. Earl Campbell, Barry Sanders, Eric Dickerson, Emmett Smith, and Marshall Falk, Falk carried the torch. It was commonplace for NFL running backs to buy expensive gifts for their offensive linemen. In the new, kinder, gentler NFL, left tackles can now buy expensive gifts for their running backs. It's weird. It doesn't seem fair. Running backs take the same risk as before, but get far less respect and value for doing it. Yes, they run the ball less, less often, but the hits dished out and taken in pass protection and or as a receiver mean they're taking the same beating. Running backs have a legit gripe. Lloyd Howe should address it beyond advising the backs to fake injuries. That's my fire starter. Now, let's bring in my main man, our main man, the star of this show, the Korean Cosell, uh, Steve Kim. Steve, I'm sure you watched uh, Monday night last night. Do you feel sorry for Nick Chubb? And, and what do you think of my take about how every position in the league is more protected than ever before, except really the running back position? I, I think there's a lot of uh, credence to it, but I'm just wondering, is, is Josina Anderson going to ask that uh, Minka Fitzpatrick get suspended? Are, are there going to be cries from Keyshawn Johnson <laughs> that there needs to be retribution? I, I mean, do we care about player safety? Do we care about cheap shots? Because, look, I understand football is a very physical, violent sport, but my view is that play right there, uh, he went directly after the guy's knees. Where is the outrage? W I, I hope he's not getting death threats. Let's not take it that far. But I, I think you're absolutely right. But again, the Players Association, boy, they, they must have the worst one. They, they've never had that Marvin Miller that's been able to see 20 years ahead, like for the Major League Baseball Association. And I'm not trying to, like, uh, be disrespectful of Gene Upshaw because I know that the game's a little bit different in terms of the contract structure and the durability or the length of careers. But everything that the Players Association does, it seems to me, Jason, they can only look five minutes out in front of their own face, but they can never look at the ramifications five, 10, 15 years. They always care about things that look shiny, but, but then every single time you come with the new collective bargaining, it's always about health insurance for players, medical benefits. And then even the salary wage scale has now worked to the detriment of specific players. So that, that to me is the deeper argument is like, who in the world is leading these players in these collective bargaining agreements? And I look, these guys know what they're getting into. They choose the game of football. Maybe they even choose their position. But yes, the human side of me actually does feel bad for the running backs and those who play it. I always cape up for Gene Upshaw, and I will again. Gene Upshaw was a great head of the NFL Players Association. Many of the things you're talking about, to me, I blame DeMarie Smith. That's who was in charge when they implemented the rookie wage scale. It's a joke. It, 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 it was stupid. I, I don't know how they got convinced other than the media leads that 
organization around by its nose and they never do what's in the best long-term interest of the game. They always do what's short-sided and including uh, setting up Roger Goodell as the uh, czar of discipline, the short-sided decision that they made. All of their decisions are, are short-sided. I, I, I do, I, I think it's crazy that, and, and, and you make the point about what, because I did not watch the replay of, because I, mm. I, I can't, ha I hate replays of injuries. And so I, I'm completely oblivious until you just made the point that Minka Fitzpatrick basically went after Nick Chubb's knee. And, and again, this is all commonplace. No one's going to object. You can do whatever you want to an NFL running back. We throw tantrums and tears and call for, you know, bounties to be placed on safeties or whomever uh, does a so-called dirty hit. Uh, obviously, the Henry Blackburn, we're going to get into it here in a second, of Colorado State's receiving death threats and all that other stuff. But, but, but you're absolutely right, and I, I'm speaking out of ignorance, so please just describe a little bit for me, because I'm telling you, I, refu I was watching the game, but I refused to watch the replay. And, and they didn't show the replay, and I haven't looked it up. What happened on the play with Nick Chubb? Well, I mean, you know, Mika Fitzpatrick's a safety, came up in run support, and, and seemed to me it, he kind of dove right at his knees and wrenched it. I, I can only watch it once, too. And, and by the way, the only replays you're going to see are basically on social media. Uh, I was actually driving back from taping the three knockdown rule, and I heard about the injury, and then I saw it later. And it's a gruesome hit because if you go back to Chubb's history, he had a very similar injury while at the University of Georgia back in 2015. And at age 29, this seems like a career ender. I don't, I don't want to make any um, assumptions. I think he's 27, Steve. Okay, late 20s, though. But this is the thing. He's, he's much closer to the natural end of his career than he was at the beginning of it. Then you throw in the nature of this injury, you already know the way running backs are treated. I mean, running backs to me are almost like new cars. As soon as you drive them off the lot, that first mile, they get devalued by half, okay? I, this whole running back situation to me is interesting because there used to be a time when we grew up, Jason, if you were a uh, Bo Jackson, or a Barry Sanders or a Herschel Walker, and you're being recruited, the high school coach would say, son, we got a plan for you. We're going to feed you the rock so much, you're going to win the Heisman. Now, now think about this. If you're Jason Whitlock, five-star running back, I'd, I'd be coming to your house in Indiana like, Mrs. Whitlock, I want to promise you one thing about your son. He will not get the ball a lot. He's going to share carry. <laughs> yes, no chance at the Heisman, but you know what? He might be a guy that gets a second contract. I mean, think about how backwards that is, that you're telling sometimes the most dangerous, lethal weapons on offense who can consistently move the chains. Hey, hey, we're going to save you. We're going to put you on layaway like you're a cardigan sweater at Chess King. It, it makes no sense. It's so antithetical to the football that I grew up with. But that is the truth. If you look at the way the Lions handled their running back situation, I thought it was real interesting. They draft Jameer Gibbs, number 12. And I said, wow, so now they're going to have him and Montgomery. Except I didn't figure this out. Uh, Montgomery was the free agent. That meant DeAndre Swift, who was coming up on his first contract, move over, Bacon, and you see now he's in Philadelphia. So cars are now basically treated like leases. You're not renting to own. You're never going to buy it. It's a lease. You get it for a certain period of time. Then you get another one. And that's the unfortunate reality of today's football. And they're sitting back looking at a Patrick Mahomes. And no one's hating on Patrick Mahomes. He's the best player in the NFL. But he just got $210 million guaranteed, a restructured deal that's going to pay him $52 million a year over the next four years. Everybody's getting rich. Everybody's getting safer and healthy, but none of that is true for NFL running backs. I want to move on to last night's game, and the, the Pittsburgh Steelers scored two defensive touchdowns and somehow beat the Browns 26 to 22. I can't figure out, Steve, if I'm more impressed with the resiliency 
of the Pittsburgh Steelers and that Mike Tomlin team and how they figure out ways to win, or like, man, the Cleveland Browns, how did they blow that game? Deshaun Watson, what's going on with him? I, I, am I impressed with the Steelers figuring out a way to win, or am I disappointed with the start of Deshaun Watson to this season? Well, my sources tell me, and I have a lot of sources in the NFL. I'm the Asian Adam Schefter. I heard that Mike Tomlin gave out two game balls, one to T.J. Watt for the sack record, and the other one he had delivered to Cleveland's locker room and Deshaun Watson. He gift wrapped that game. That is one of – you know – People always talk about managing a game like it's such a pejorative. This is why you need game managers. All quarterbacks have to manage the game or they will manage you into a loss. And his carelessness with the football directly led to that loss. That Browns locker room, I'm imagining, is already depressed because they lost one of their best players. But to lose a game of that nature, there must have been an incredible amount of side eye given to that guy, Deshaun Watson. And I tweeted about this last night. It was only about three, four years ago, Jason, as he led the Texans to this big lead against the Chiefs, and which they eventually got swamped at the end in the AFC Championship game. But I remember distinctly thinking, wow, Deshaun Watson's going to be one of the pillars of the league. He is the future franchise quarterback of the present for the Texans, and he's going to be a star. Like They're good. But then all of a sudden, look what happened, Jason. He started to try to run the franchise. It all became about everything but football. Social justice was a big key. He wanted to hire certain people. And he tried to become more than just an athlete. He's more than just an athlete to a point. He's not even a good quarterback. And now the Browns have an albatross because they made an incredibly reckless commitment towards him and I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't because you, you can make an argument that he's rusty after basically not playing for two years. You know what? The more and more I talk to people and I got a couple of tweets, you can look at it this way. He's no longer the same guy after two years. It's not just rust. This, like he willingly sat out his last year in Texans, and then his own actions got him suspended. I think there's a stark realization, Jason, this is what Deshaun Watson is now. All right, Steve, we're going to segue into a different conversation or circle back to a conversation about Colorado State. I do want to tell the audience, though, uh, (laughs) there's construction going on outside Steve's apartment, and that may be what you're hearing in the background. We we kept trying to figure it out, and and Steve has informed us that uh, there's there's some construction work in Koreatown. I don't know what you guys are doing to your rooftops in uh, Koreatown, Steve, but uh, anyway, that's what you're hearing in the background. Steve, I want to move on to what's going on with Henry Blackburn, the safety for Colorado State, put the hit on uh, Travis Hunter, apparently hurt Travis Hunter. The kid's been receiving death threats. Uh, People have hunted down uh, telephone numbers and email addresses and home addresses of people in his family. This, this, there's clearly a target on his back. And this goes along with my view of just like how protective and over the top the passion is for Deion Sanders and the Colorado football team and, and people, all these casual fans that either don't understand football or are caught up in this environment where the media has has demonized this kid at an unfair level, in my view. I, I, I felt like, yes, the hit was late. Yes, it deserved a flag. No, I wouldn't have had a problem had they tossed him out of the game. But that what the kid did is typical football. And, and those type hits have been going on in football forever. And, and now we've reached this point because of social media. Everybody feels like, uh, hey, let's blame, let's target. Let, and particularly, I, I'm not sure if this kid was a black safety, if this thing would be going on at the level that it is. Uh, but since he's a white guy, it seems to be open season on him. 
What do you think about the reaction and what, in my view, the overreaction to Henry Blackburn's hit on Travis Hunter? Unfortunately, it does not surprise me. This is par for the course in today's society and culture. But I do have a, a question for those fine people engaging in such activities. If you saw a social media video of someone committing a crime, uh, violent or otherwise, or some type of theft or vandalism, and you knew who that person was, would you dox them like you would this kid? Uh, I think that has to be asked. Or, or, so you're more outraged by something that happens on a field of athletic play than a lot of the crime that you see. Can we be honest about this? They probably wouldn't. I find that fascinating on many levels. Well, they know there can be no retribution by Henry Blackburn. And <clears throat> again, I, I think a lot of the animus towards Henry Blackburn is being stirred up by corporate media and social media, all the memes, all the out-of-context conversation going on about what took place during that game. That hit, and, and I, I saw, Steve, I saw Micah Parsons do a uh, podcast or his own podcast where he's talking about this Henry Blackburn. And, and that's what everybody has entered into the media space and everybody's a content creator and everybody's got to get their opinion out there. This is the world we live in. And so I, I, I'm looking at Micah Parsons and, and he wasn't way, way over the top with his opinions about uh, Henry Blackburn, but I, I was shocked that a defensive player who, again, I know he plays in this new safe space NFL, and maybe he's not familiar with the way football used to be played just seven, eight, ten years ago. But I was shocked that Micah Parsons was out here going after this kid in any way and, and commenting about it. But that's the world we live in. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every... NFL player, every professional athlete has a podcast and sitting around and talking about Henry Blackburn and that hit and just creating this groundswell of animus towards him. This is all new. And, and this is where, you know, all these, these technological advances and everybody has a platform and everybody has a platform to be really irresponsible. And that's what they're doing, in my opinion. And it's putting a kid like Henry Blackburn in jeopardy. Well, Jason, uh, it kind of reminds me of what I was told about the Internet years ago. Uh, the great thing about the World Wide Web is everyone can express their opinion. Uh, the bad thing about the World Wide Web is everyone can express their opinion. But, hey, I love the First Amendment, so I'm going to be consistent with it. I have no problems with people stating how they feel. Uh, the interesting thing is with Micah Parsons, he has to be on code, I believe, as an active athlete. Um, and Jason, as someone who's always off code, you understand the ramifications of not being with that mob mentality. So maybe he has no other choice but to actually express that particular opinion publicly, whether he means it or not. What I find interesting is that Travis Hunter himself, he seems to be the least offended by what's going on. And he has stated, hey, this is football. I kind of know what this is. I'm OK with it. So thumbs up to that. What I found most interesting is that Ryan Clark, I want to give him credit because it seems to me like he's actually said, hey, I played football. I was a violent defender. I've been in that mindset, and I probably engage in activities like that. I found that to be incredibly and refreshingly honest. Well, and trust me, I thought about Ryan Clark this morning and, and felt like he's boxed in because there's so much video of him playing safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers that he has no choice because yeah. if he says something the opposite, there's going right. to be video say, oh, okay, Ryan, explain this. And, and so I'll, I'll give him credit, but, but I agree with you. The person that deserves the most credit is Travis Hunter. He's the most responsible person here. I want to read his full quote. He did a live stream. You, you referenced it, but I want to read his full quote. You know, it's football at the end of the day, he started saying. And then he said, stuff like that is going to happen. So I just stay humble. He did what he was supposed to do. It's football. 
something as bad is going to happen on the field sooner or later. You've just got to get up and fight again. That's what I try to do, get up and fight. Good thing the doctors stopped me because if there were no doctors there, I would have still been out there playing, but I'm thankful for everybody that helped me. Now, I'm going to pick up, I love this kid's comments. Uh, he, he seems to be showing some self-awareness because there, there's a couple things he knows. He was out in pregame. He and that whole team talking smack, amping up, everybody on both sides of the ball. He also knows that he's been playing both ways for two straight weeks and, and possibly came into the game a little bit banged up. That's why he's not crying and, and, blame, and pointing fingers and all that. I, I give Travis Hunter a lot of credit. I give Ryan Clark some credit for some self-awareness, but there are a lot of people uh, that, that just need to shut up and quit running their mouth because anybody that's watched football for any length of time, just like I talked about yesterday, we've seen these types of hits, and we've seen the attitude that Colorado State played with when amped up with a team that has been as arrogant and as outspoken and as in your face as the Colorado football team and, and, and Deion Sun. Uh, flashing gold chains and watches and taunting people and the whole I'm better than you mentality coming from Colorado, all of that stuff has contributed to, to what happened to Travis Hunter and the style of football game we saw. So, Steve, I, 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 great job. Thank you for reminding me of what uh, Travis Hunter said. He has been so far the most mature person in the aftermath uh, of that injury. I want to move on to one other point that you have consistently made about Dion and, and college football. You know, they, they set records. That's the highest rated game yeah. on ESPN this weekend. I think the fifth highest rated game in the his, college football game in the history of ESPN. The thing kicked off at 10 p.m. Eastern yeah. time. It went <laughs> until 1 and 2 in the morning and still set oh. all kinds of records. Oh. The power of Dion and uh, the hype he's brought to college football is pretty amazing. The, it gives new meaning to the term primetime. It really does. I, I remember <laughs> when this game, when this rivalry was at its highest ebb, it was Sonny Lubick and Gary Barnett were leaving the programs. Uh, and I, if, if I recall correctly, in the 2000s, when Colorado State had their most success, this game would always be on like a Thursday or a Friday night to itself on like a Fox Sports regional type of thing. And I'd watch it because it was early season. It was the only game on. And it was kind of a regional rivalry. This game became a national event. It was trending. Like I told you, as soon as William Zapata scored his knockout, I slammed my laptop and I drove, and I went all Asian driver. I hope no one got hurt. Anyone I cut off, I'm sorry. I apologize. I was really into this ball game. And this is the issue with, with Colorado. They are now a thing, and we talked about it yesterday. They have to understand that comes at a price. Um, now you are a target. You are now everyone's biggest game. You're no longer that 111 team that people are going to overlook. But this is what I really do like about Deion Sanders' involvement in college football. In an era when we have lost rivalries, lost emotions, the game does not seem to mean as much. It makes you care. And this particular weekend, Jason, I believe is one of the best weekends of college football I think we're ever going to see. There's like eight or nine really good games that I will be focusing in on. Trust me, I will find a way to watch them all at once because that's what I do. OK, it's going to be football palooza once again at Coach JB's house. And one of the screens will absolutely be dedicated to Colorado, Oregon. There's no I don't care what other game is on, but one of the three, four big screens will be on that particular game. Why? Because we care because Dion has made Colorado relevant. He's made them important. And him and Lanning obviously have some underlying tension, which is a little bit different than the with Jay Norvell. I cannot wait to watch Colorado, Oregon, 
and quite frankly, probably to see how the rest of the year plays out for the Buffaloes. So I think you may have baited me into hopping on an airplane. Oh, come and, on down. And <laughs> I'm, JB's coming on after you. I got to find out what he's cooking. I'm this close to hopping on an airplane okay. and, and, and watch, checking out some Saturday football. Uh, my cholesterol will be twice as high as it is on Sunday morning than it was today. Uh, I'm going to have hardened arteries all up and down the old kicker, and I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, I'm actually going to get there at 9 o'clock in the morning, which means i got to leave here at about, what, 745, starting with Florida State Clemson at Death Valley, and then all the games all throughout the night, UCLA, Utah, Wazoo, Oregon State, uh, obviously, Miami Temple, the main event. Every other game takes a backseat to that. But the other game, I'm just telling you, it's going Notre Dame against Ohio State. Jason, come on down. Got, you got you got air miles. Come on, yeah, I, come on. I, I'm looking to see what time Ball State kicks off and whether or not JB's got a TV that can be dedicated uh, to my Cardinals. Uh, <laughs> might even open up the theater. Here's a nice theater. We can make that the Ball State Theater. We can do that for you. Uh, I'll make a few calls. I got sources. Oh, over. Yeah, we play Georgia Southern at uh, 1 p.m. Central Time. Uh, man, it, uh, that, at 1 p.m. Yeah, I, I, and that's on ESPN Plus. But I, I may last thing very quickly because I got to get to JB. Don't you think Jay Norville deserves a little credit for those ratings? Yeah. In ter his pregame comments. You know what Jay Norvell was? He was like the Bobby the Brain Heenan or Mouth of the South. He was like that like that wrestling heel manager. Um, uh, classy Freddie Blast. He flat out said, man, those Colorado guys are a bunch of pencil neck geeks. I mean, as soon as he said that and the fact he didn't back off and he was so bold about it. And, and he had his players. Jason, they weren't just dogs. They were Dobermans. I... Look, say what you want about their tactics. You can call it dirty. Jason, I thought it was one of the most inspiring performances I've ever seen. It's really too bad, though. They didn't quite play smart enough to actually pull off the victory. But, yes, Norvell deserves credit. Cosell, I got to let you go. We got to get to JB. Thank you. I got to find out what's on the menu. I'm, I'm, let me look at some flights here. All right, uh, before we go, before we get to JB, uh, Samaritan Ministries, tired of someone else telling you where to go when you have a medical need? Are you ready to take control of your health care? Samaritan Ministries could be the solution you're looking for. They connect hundreds of thousands of Christians across the nation who come together through prayer, encouragement, and financial support when a medical need arises. It's not insurance, and you're not limited by restrictive networks. Say you have a medical need. You don't have to check and see what hospital is in your network or be concerned about the doctor being in network too. No, you go to the hospital, you choose, and don't give a second thought as to what's in network and what's not because with Samaritan Ministries, you're in control of your health care. Afterwards, fellow members pray for you and send money directly to you to help you pay your medical bills. And when they have a medical need, you'll do the same for them. That's what biblical health care sharing looks like. Check it out today at SamaritanMinistries.org slash fearless. That's SamaritanMinistries.org slash fearless. All right, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Coach JB, Jason Brown, next. Go to heaven with freedom. It's my obligation to hate discrimination. Raising up your hands for freedom. Previously on Fearless. I'll say this to everyone. He was the best trash talker I ever played against. The, ba the bad news was he backed it up. <laughs> Chris Carter. Those people who are the best trash talkers never they back just it talk up. Trash. Yeah. Chris like, Carter was the best because Chris Carter never cussed. I mean, he would rip you in half. And I mean, not one mild word out of his mouth. Is that possible? Yes. <laughs> Chris Carter is the master of it. I watched him tell one of my teammates one time. He said, man. How long you been in the league? And I'm thinking in my mind, do not talk to him. Please, Jesus, <laughs> do not talk to him. This is the Jedi mind trick. You about to fall in the trap. Don't do it. He is, dog. I'm like, oh, my God. He said, don't you think it's about time for you to take advantage of the dinner program and get that damn fixed? <laughs> <laughs> the 
So now, so now my teammate turns and looks at me and I got him. <laughs> <laughs> I told you don't talk to him. Welcome back. Uh, let's roll out to Los Angeles again and bring in Coach JB, Jason Brown from Last Chance U. Uh, JB, I'm going to start with uh, a question about nothing important, although it is important to me. Uh, what's on the menu Saturday uh, for college football at Coach JB's house? I'm this close to booking a flight and crashing your football party on Saturday. Come on, man. You're not, you're not ready for that. Um, I'm yes, gonna do I some am. <laughs> three different racks of ribs, Jason, in your honor. I'm going to do three different ways. I'll do a Cajun rub. I'll probably do a uh, my own seasoning that I mix up every once in a while. Steve kind of likes. I throw a bunch of different things together. I'll bake one set. I'll smoke one on the drum, and then I'll smoke one on the uh, Traeger. And then I'm going to do a uh, tri-tip, and then I'm going to probably do some sliders, and then my incredible nachos, chicken nachos with everything on it to start with. And then I'm going to have some chocolate chip cookies. You know what I mean? That's my fattening weekend. I, I only eat cookies every so often, Jason. So I'll have those as hors d'oeuvres. But I will have veggies, too. I have veggies. I might have some shrimp. I do it all, Jason. Uh, yeah. I, 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 do it I all. know. <laughs> Jay, and so if I fly into LAX... How far am I? What's my drive to your house? Now, fly into Ontario. I don't, I wonder if they do direct. Yeah, they do. Nashville. They do. They do it all the time. Fly into, fly into Ontario. You're 25 minutes from me. Ontario. Yeah, not, and don't That's go to Canada either. Yeah, I know. That's what everything showing up is Canada when I look. What what's what's the code on that arrow? arrow? Oh, yeah, I'll get it after. Yeah, should be O N T Ontario Cali. Um, yeah, found it. Uh, so listen, I want to start uh, with Coach Prime and and Colorado. They almost lost to Colorado State, as I predicted. I want to play you this clip of Dion. Uh, not knowing who his starting center is, and I just how commonplace is this for a head coach? Let's watch the clip. Can you talk about Hank Zelinkas? He was the true freshman that got who, to start today who? at center. Hank. Center. Oh, I'm sorry. I ain't, I, I'm thinking Hank. Yeah, he got to he got to start as a true freshman today at center. Can Hanks. you talk about him? Um, it's hard. I, I, I was watching how the, everything flowed. I haven't watched film to see how he really performed, but he stepped up. And uh, this is, that's what this business is, is a next man up type of business. So I'm uh, proud of that he stepped up. I haven't watched the game film to really give you a true evaluation on how he did. Your th am, is that something or nothing? Does Dion know who his starting center is? Could he pick him out in the police lineup? <laughs> All right, this. You know, I like to give you devil's advocate here, all right? <laughs> There's two yeah. things here. There's a lot to dive into today on this, but let me let me break this down. I used to bring 200 guys into to camp every summer, all right? I would be remiss if I told you that I knew every single one of them before I actually got to actually know them, Jason. What does that mean? I used to say, you got to do something for me to remember your damn name. And that usually is something good. So having said that, this is a mercenary business now. It's no longer, you know, recruit the kid for four years, play for me for four years. He brought in a whole new roster. It doesn't shock me one bit that he doesn't know who that guy is. Now, I would find it hard to believe you don't know who it is when he's protecting your son. That's the part that I'm confused about. But he was clearly shocked, and I just wish, Jason, well, I don't really care, but I wish he would have just said nothing. Like, I wish he would have said nothing um, because saying who, it kind of uh, it looks kind of bad as the figurehead of the program. Um, but I have been there, but I also would have known my center during the actual game three of the season. 
200 guys in in summer in July, it takes me a while because half of them are going to cut anyway or they're going to get kicked out or cut themselves. But this is the starting center. Uh, it's a little shocking. I don't know the context of it all, but it's a little shocking that you don't know who's protecting your son, um, I guess. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a g- bad look. A freshman starting at center in a big game, snapping the ball to your son. You should know who he is, but we'll move on. I want to ask one other Colorado, Colorado State question. Y- your thoughts on the reaction to the Henry Blackburn hit that apparently injured Travis Hunter. I, I think it was late. I think it's illegal. I had no problem with the flag. If they had bounced him from the game in this new environment, I wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't have objected. But I don't think this is in the top two million of dirty hits in the history of college football. It's not even close. I agree. Um, I I want to. I just want the tos of the world and all these other guys out here advocating for this kid to be suspended for the season. And for Jay Norvell to be fired and put a self him, self ban on himself and self ban on Blackburn and all this crap. That's what I want to I want to see stop because I saw 30 more hits during this weekend that were worse than that one. And I saw a guy form tackle Jaden Daniels at LSU and got ejected. So the hypocrisy of the NCAA and the rules committee is really the bad part of this um should he be an ejected based on the rule and everything we see every day he should have been ejected he wasn't um and he clearly took another step by uh, his own player which is the part that you kind of look at as like okay we know where he's going but matt matt mcchesney and i colorado alum who's who's there every day he we got into an argument today because he he kind of pointed out that jay norville taught him that And I've known Jay 30 years, and I'm like, I disagree with you. And we got into a heated argument. I said, listen, if I was coaching that Colorado State team, they would have exactly done the same thing. They would have played for me as well. I am getting tired, Jason, of the celebrity status that is being jocked um, across America by everybody because we're jocking Prime and Deion Sanders a little bit too much now. It was cute in the beginning. But I got to be honest, if he didn't have everybody on the sideline that he has, and if he wasn't who he is, nobody would have cared about that Travis Hunter hit because Travis Hunter himself has come out and said that's football. Because Travis Hunter knows he instigated the whole thing starting it in pregame. So, like, no one's bringing that up either. But what I want to bring up more importantly, Jason, and I please want your audience to hear this, when is someone going to say, hey, man, I get that Prime has buy-in from his players. I've said it on your show, Jason. When is someone going to say, well, damn, Jay Norville has buy-in too, it looks like, contrary to belief, because they sure showed up, and they wanted to smoke, and it wasn't no backing down, and those players played for his head, their head coach, and it was evident, it was really evident, and I want to know where the, why is that such a bad thing? This is, if this, if, if animosity, Jason, creates games like that, which is the best football game of the season so far, then we, damn it, we need to have more animosity out there because we need to see better football. And that was a great game. That was a great game. And I'm tired of seeing this soft football. Like, football's meant to be violent, I thought it was a, I thought it was a compelling game with high stakes, and, and that's different than what we – they've reduced the stakes. No one takes anything personal. Again, that was like, hey, we're not exchanging jerseys afterwards. We don't like each other, and we'll see you next year. I like compelling. Got it. That's what I don't think it was greatly played. Any, any game that had – I think Colorado State had 18 penalties and Colorado had 10. Wow. Uh, it, it, it was very sloppy. It hey, was very Jason, sloppy. Let me ask but, you this. Your uh, rivalry, Ball State yeah. – how many rivalry games were you in that were just super clean and nice? Like, there's going to be none. It's high penalty. Indiana right? State was our big rivalry. Yeah, and we yeah, had a big, it, we had a big brawl at the Hoosier Dome between us and Indiana State. I believe in 1987. And uh, it's, high, it's high. It's usually yeah. high flagged. 
I mean, it is what it is. It's usually yeah. that emotion, yeah. adrenaline. So I didn't expect a clean game, but I'm going to tell you right now, the nine personal fouls is a direct correlation of buy-in by Jay Norville and that staff. Like, they are bought in because they were playing with high energy and they were did not want to let his their head coach, Jay Norville, down, Jason. And people need to bring no that question. up more than, than just be on prime side on this. No question. JB, I want to move on to last night's game. Uh, Deshaun Watson in the NFL uh, is off to a very slow start. Uh, I, I'm cost him that game with a fumble. Uh, the pick six, I don't really blame on him. I blame on the receiver. But the fumble late, and he, he's just not playing at a high level. Do we think he's ever going to return to superstar status? like the perception was when he was in Houston. No, I don't, I'm going to know if I'm – can I be Coach Prime today? I got receipts. I got receipts. <laughs> uh, I think I'm on this show saying that he'll never be the same because when you have all these uh, allegations, you know, assumptions, assume, you know, presumptions and all these different things that are out there over you, um, you can never live freely unless you didn't do it. And then you can say, you know, screw the world. But I haven't seen him do that. I haven't seen any players that played with them at Clemson come out and say this guy's being uh, wrongfully accused. I haven't seen any of his coaches say it. Uh, it's crazy. Nobody brings that up. But anyway, no, he'll never be the same. I've said it on your show. I've said it on a thousand shows. I said it on my show two years ago. He's done. He's never going to be the same. You overpaid. You got cooked. Cleveland Browns are, are going to be set back for a long time. He looks atrocious, just like all the rest of the quarterbacks in the NFL look right now. Uh, it is a the worst I've ever seen it. I'm going to continue to stand on the hill. The quarterback play is just getting worse and worse, and it's just crazy. That Those two games last night were one of the two worst football games I've seen in a long time, and it just keeps getting worse. I'm thinking, dang, is it going to get better or what? Uh, Pickett is, is – is, is, Pickett is as bad as it gets. He he had one pass to Pickens over the middle that obviously gave him some yards, but without with that offense, the Steelers are done. Like football's bad. It is what it is. I do not like football anymore. And Smitty told me that today, and I agree with him. Steve Kim, I said, ah, screw it. Football's bad. I'm not gonna like it anymore. I guess I'll be that guy. <laughs> but football's bad. Jason, are are you weak? Like I I I gotta be honest. He brought up a point. J, you know, Watt, TJ Watt breaks the record in seven years. I wasn't impressed. Steve Kim kind of fared with me on this one. I'm like, I'm not as it's not as impressive as, as Harrison, who he broke. Um, it's not as impressive. We are in a jersey swap era, Jason. Like we like we are allowing this guy to do what he does. There's no more nastiness. We used to say, Jason. Guess what? TJ Watt has an opportunity to beat the break the record tonight. And I would MF them to up and down. You they not he's not breaking a record on us tonight. You think that's being said anymore? Hell no. Nah. It's a friendly jersey swap era. I'm so tired of it. I'm not impressed with a seven year breaking the record. I'm sorry. I, I'm not gonna disrespect it. He's a great player to see he and his brother play at such a high level. Uh, and do it consistently is impressive. Uh, you know, do they need to, you know, do, here I remember James Harrison won a Super Bowl. And so do I put, I got to put, TJ Watt's a really good player. Is he, he is great. on the same level great. as James Harrison? I, I, I'm not sure. That, I'll have to think about that, JB. Let, let me move on to another one that, that I want your take on because you talk about, Bad quarterback play. One guy that's actually playing well is Baker Mayfield, surprisingly, off to a 2-0 and start with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not playing as well, but off to a 2-0 and start is Derek Carr with the New Orleans Saints. What's more sustainable in the NFC South, Baker Mayfield and the Bucs or Derek Carr and the Saints? Um, man, that is a hell of a question. And it is a, uh, it's a tough one for me because Derek Carr, um, you know, I, I, he's horrible. I, I, I don't know how bad, I don't know how, I don't know where to start with him. I'm the only one that continues to say he is who he is. I don't know why you guys thought he was really going to go someplace new and do different things. He's doing the exact same thing for a guy that says he wants to old old bet JB. Huh? 2-0. Oh. 
Yeah, two and zero. Oh. Who they play? <laughs> They're horrible. Have you seen them play? They are god awful. <laughs> by the way, I think I said it on my show, if not yours. They play zero quarterbacks of any type of star studdedness at all until week fourteen. They could literally be in the worst division in football. They could literally be, you know, they could win ten games because they don't play anybody, like quarterback wise, as far as a quarterback on the other side of the ball that can move the ball against that defense because they have a great defense. Uh, Dennis Allen's got a great defense there. Offensively, they're bad. Kamara, first three games is out. He'll be back at game four, but he's going to help out a little bit. But but Derek Carr is who he is, Jason. He is who he is. Um, they have an aging wide Who's out. Baker Mayfield? He Who, is, who's Baker Mayfield he is, then? But guess what? Mike Evans is playing for some money. Mike Evans looks like he's one of the top five wideouts in football right now. Again, he's got a chip on his shoulder. Um, and I think they have a great defense as well. But Baker's movie will show rerun again. It, we'll be watching the same movie here and real shortly, and we'll be wanting refunds. Um, trust me, you'll be wanting a refund. He's he is who he is. He's not gonna just shock us and go 12 and 0. <laughs> he's he is who he is. Football is bad, Jason. The the quarterback play is atrocious. If we're debating who's better, Derek Carr or Baker Mayfield, just let that sink in. Not better. What's going to be more sustainable? Who's going to finish with a better record? Sounds like you think New Orleans is going to finish with a better record than Tampa based on schedule. Yeah, I like their defense a little better. And based on their schedule, they're not going to play any real formidable quarterback until week 14 or so. They don't really play any quarterback that's worth anything until late in the year. I, lo- I have Atlanta winning that division, though, by the way. I think Arthur Smith's really good. I love Bijan as the rookie of the year. I love Atlanta. I'm not huge on the quarterback Ritter, but I do love Atlanta and Arthur Smith. Um, I called the, the Green Bay game last week. That I thought they would win that. They did. They got it done on a, on a, on a pick em. But uh, I like Atlanta in the division. I just think it's a bad football division. But New Orleans has a shot to be much better, higher sustainable than that uh, Baker Mayfield movie we've seen over and over. I was going to ask you about Mel Tucker, but I don't have time. So I want you to, I, I, based on my research here, I need to fly into LAX. How, how far is that drive from LAX? Uh, 55 an hour, no traffic. I can do that. All you got to do I is get with a car service. Steve will pick you up and drive you with him because he lives right by LAX. Yeah, yeah. yeah court date, I don't. Jason. I'm. I'm not a big fan of Steve's car. Just to be quite honest. With you. What <laughs> does he, he have? Still drive I, the same I, car. I don't know. What I he think has. it starts with Han. I think it starts with Han, and I think it may end with Die. But I can't. This is not a you <laughs> I'm not. But I'll have to. I'll have to ask him. Maybe he's, I got to find out what he's doing with this money I'm paying him and Mario hey. Lopez is paying because he ain't, hey. he ain't spending on a car. By the way, Urban Meyer to Michigan State. Let that resonate. Urban Meyer to Michigan State. That's interesting. That's interesting. And so, if I come, there's three different styles of ribs on the menu. And a TV dedicated to the Ball State Georgia Southern game. Smitty said he wants to come watch that game. I said, "Who's going to watch that game? We can put that up on our phone." But yeah, we'll have it. I got I got eleven <laughs> TVs, Jason. I got a ninety-five inch. I got a hundred and forty inch. I got nine TVs in the bar. You're going to have plenty of room where to go. Plus, mm. JB, I think I'm going to be there. Don't be shocked. I think I'm going to be there. Thank you, JB. Uh, right, we'll play some tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. No negotiation, my sister, no relation. We all just wanna have freedom. Sitting on a corner, never been alone. I'm breaking my back for freedom. Bless, we are living, get back. We are receiving all the seeds when we all wanna be free. We want freedom. I just want, I wanna be, I just